Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo! Hey yo, hey yo! Wow, check out week 11! I love it, I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited for oh, this week. Come on, I love it. Welcome to the checkout with me, Kev the Rev, and. And she got me, Pastor Ka- Angie. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, yes, you know, we've never said about our Twitter handles. Yeah, and those, all those are my are, handles. Yes, which ones? <laughs> <laughs> and all got of them. Me. Angie got me at Instagram and Twitter, and Angie, Angie Katama at uh, Facebook. Wow, for me, it's. It's Kev the Rev. Uh, on all pages, though, Facebook, we still maintain Kevin Kilonzi. Mm. But welcome to the takeout where we are going through the New Testament in one year. And every week, we get to let you know what you're going to be reading. Uh, we give you our own personal takeout yeah. and just, you know, uh, grapple some of those conversations with you. As we, uh, you know, invite you to do every week, kindly go to the chat. Let us know what you've got from the takeout. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to know what your thoughts are. Because we also want to grow. And so this week, we are literally in the last week of Mark. We're in the last week of Mark. I can't believe Mark has gone so fast. Yeah. I know. But it's a small book, like we said. And yes. he, fo- he focuses on moving fast, showing yes. the action. And, and like you said, showing Jesus as the suffering servant. Wow. And so I've enjoyed... The TikTok of the gospel. I know, right? It's the TikTok <laughs> of the gospel. For sure, for sure. He's very fast. Yeah. Uh, but I've enjoyed it. So we're in week... F- um, when chapter 11. 14. Yeah. Week 11, chapter 14, chapter 14 to, 16, to yeah. 16. And so this is literally the last few days of Jesus' um, uh, time. Come on. Um, and so he focuses a lot on what happens in the last few hours. Come on. And so chapter 14 starts with, you know, guys are plotting to kill Jesus. So he's chilling in a house uh, and then he's anointed by... Uh, um, uh, Mary Magdalene, this woman, just walks in and falls at his feet, drama, and starts anointing him. <laughs> and then guys are like, she spent so much money. Mm. But he's like, dude, um, I, I love it because I feel like it reminds, he says, the poor you'll always have with you because he's like, don't focus on the money. Mm. But me, you have me for a few minutes. I feel like when I read that, I feel what Jesus was saying is sometimes it's important to focus on being intimate with him. Oh, come on. He says come something. On. He says, the poor you always have with mm. you. Now, it sounds insensitive, but he was referring to a quote in Deuteronomy, uh, I think chapter 11, 15, chapter yeah. 15, yeah. where he tells them, when you go into the land I've promised you, you'll still have poor people. Mm. He says, this is how you treat them. Or oh, be generous. Be generous. He says, Give. be very generous yeah. with them. Yeah. So he's saying, yes, because it does repeat there, the poor you always, always have with you, mm. therefore be generous. Mm. But then here he says, Focus sometimes on being intimate. So give out of intimacy. Mm. Give generously out of intimacy with me. Give to the church because you desire to be with me. It's not just about, you know, being generous to the poor out of all the time, just wanting to look good. But it's out of, based off that intimacy with me. Wow, and it's interesting because Matthew now, I think Matthew 23, 23, no, Matthew something, Mm. uh, says, (laughs) (laughs) talks about... uh, 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 giving to the poor, mm. but also giving to the Lord. Yes. In the same sentence. And so it separates that. Yeah. Because sometimes even for me, I'm like, oh, I'm giving to, oh, I could have given to the poor. Like God mm. is like, always do that. Like always. don't now wake up and say, oh, I could have given to the poor. It's always be given to the poor. That's right. And then pursue intimacy with pursue God in the same light. Come him. on. So I think that he celebrated that she's choosing to honor me. She's choosing mm. to be intimate with me mm. because that action that she did was such an intimate act and I love it because money is intimate for us because it's on. a personal thing. Yeah. And so I love that he says, be intimate with me in mm. that way. Wow. Then, okay, so now the betrayal happens. These guys are going, they go for dinner. Mm. They have the last supper together. They're, yep. they're reclining because it's, you know, Leonardo da Vinci cheated us when he said they were like at a table chilling or looking at I the same know. time taking a <laughs> selfie. It's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, they used to sit reclined at a table so guys are chilling they've eaten Mm. they've had this prophetic moment jesus has washed their feet and everything and then they leave that space they are full happy then they leave there with a hymn it says they sang on their way to the garden i was like what is a road trip (laughs) then in the car like oh they're singing a hymn they're like on the way okay maybe for us it's another jam you know one of (laughs) one of kanji songs so they're singing their song they end up in the garden and then jesus um he he remember he always used to do this thing where he separates Mm. So there was, there were many people that followed him. Then there was the twelve. Wow. Then he invited the three. the three. So he, uh, he, you know, and he tells the three guys, come with mm. me into this garden. Mm. Then he he tells them, okay, fine, you guys are gonna betray me. Certain things are gonna happen. Mm. Um, but then he he sits and tells them, sit while I pray. Yes. Now I've never noticed that. He I says, know. Sit 
while I pray. Me, I was always like, these guys are just evil. Then wow. I prayed with him in his hour of need because he says, you know, he says, uh, he says I'm pained to the mm. point of death. Mm. I was like, hey, Jesus, your brother has just given you some words. Eh. But he says, chill with me. Wow. Now the season I'm in, is in, I'm on my sabbatical Come season. On. And on. I feel like what God has asked us to do is sit and be with me. And be with me. Wow. So it stood out to me. In fact, when I first read it, when I was preparing, I burst out crying because I'm like, it's so hard to be silent in the mm. presence of God. Mm. You want to come with him with an agenda. Yeah. You're thinking about your relas. Yeah. You're thinking about your job. You're thinking about, but he's like, just be with me while I pray for you. Wow. While I pray about this thing that I need to do for you. Mm. He's like, just be with me. Wow. And so he sits, he tells him, just sit and be with me. But the brothers obviously fall asleep. I know. He got me thinking, what are the things that make us fall asleep? You know, first of all, tiredness, mm. you know, you makes you fall asleep. So even though the Lord has told you, sit and be with me, you're just tired. Mm. Yeah. Um, satisfaction. I mean, these guys had eaten, yeah. they have sung a hymn, yeah. they have walked, mm. then they've been picked away. Like you're just, hey, yeah, we've made it in life. Made it. Yeah? Let's, Let's just sleep. <laughs> And I think that, you know, he comes back and is like, couldn't you guys just watch mm. and pray? Watch and pray. So sometimes I think that when we think about, let's say, for 30 AM prayers or, or finding extended times of mm. prayer, mm. we look at it as work instead of looking at it as opportunities to be intimate with wow, your father. Come on. Just sit and be with me. In fact, mm. the, the guide that we're using, my husband and I, says, don't say a long prayer for 10 minutes. Be silent and say, here I am. 10 Simple. minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes sounds short. I'm telling you those 10 minutes, random thoughts come for, did I pay a leg bill? And then like, <laughs> you have to <laughs> say Yeah, this? what am I doing after did this? Food remain? And you're like, no, chill and be with your father. Wow. And he says, be my daughter. Mm. Just be my child mm. and know that I love you, that I am concerned about you, that everything I'm doing is for your mm. good. So sit, watch and pray. Wow. Because wow. remember what's happening here. Judas is plotting. I know. Actually, that very that hour. That very hour. Judas is collecting money in the temple. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. So wow. we may be thinking, okay, fine. The devil is, is at the hour for 30 a.m. Even mm. he's having a meeting, plotting your demise. And I Father think... is saying, sit and be with me. What you've said is what makes us sleep. So there's one where, you know, you know, you know, satisfaction and mm. all that. But you could also sleep because number one, you don't know what the Lord is going through. Mm. But number two, you don't know what the devil is plotting. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know. And I feel like we, we always want to have this huge agenda, come with this pr huge prayer list, pray in several tongues, whatever it is. What I learned is sometimes just saying, Father, here I am mm. is enough. Mm. Here I am as your daughter is enough. Sometimes I, I think when, when in, prayer ta in prayers we say pray out loud because it helps you not to be distracted. Mm. You're hearing yourself mm. pray and it helps. Sometimes pray out loud so that you're not easily falling asleep. Be with your father and be in that intimate space with him. So build your prayer culture. So good. I love, so I love the Garden of Gethsemane. Wow. But they, maybe maybe there's someone who's already feeling tired mm. and feeling worn out, feeling burdened. Mm. Let me tell you, I'm thinking through the April Summon series. We're going to be talking about grace. I love it. And genuinely, I'm in a season of being tired. Mm. And so I remember I called Pastor James, one of the pastors, uh, lead pastor at Hill City Campus, and I told him, Pastor James, I'm tired. I, 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 I allow me to sleep at 4.30 because mm. I just, I need, I need accountability. Mm. So I need you to know that I'll not be showing up at 4.30 for two days. I just want to sleep. And at some point I was feeling conflicted because mm. I need to do it. I need to show up. I need to be there. Mm. And I remember just as I talked through, as I thought through grace and it's sort of God was telling me, Kevin, one more hour of prayer will not make me love you more. Imagine. And you not praying for one hour will not make you love me. Mm. I've already loved you completely. I've already loved you. But if you're tired, it's okay. I'm your father. I know you're tired. Mm. I know you're worn yeah. out. And I remember just saying, Lord, what I have today is 10 minutes, but I want to spend them exactly. with you. Pastor Angie, I enjoyed those 10 minutes mm. of just, Lord, I, I'm, I have 10 minutes. How are you doing? This is where I am. And I just poured my heart out to God. And I don't think he loves me less because of that. Now, there's need for me to learn how to spend time yeah, and yeah, hours yeah. and all that. But he's a father, nonetheless, who understands, I know the season you're in. I know the season. Yeah, yeah. In fact, what I love about it is because you're building intimacy, mm. then I think you, you get encouraged to say, in this season, it's, you, you know, it's, the, it's a 10 minutes today, but it will become 
every second, every hour. Mm. Like, is it? It's Miles Monroe who says, "No, he's a walking prayer meeting." Oh, come on. Yeah, I've told God that's what I want to come be. On. And so, what I realize, even in this season of my break, I'm, I'm understanding God literally wants. He wants me to hear him mm. every second of every day and just be in his presence. So it's it's a, it's a discipline, it's a thing you learn. You need to learn to, to silence, you know, other voices. You need to learn to just be with him, even yeah. in your sleeping time, to Come say, on. Father, I'm so tired, but I want to be with you. And they were still with him. Yep. And, I, and I think to know that he still loves you, whatever season mm. you're in. I love it. I love because now after this moment, we're going to him being caught now. Mm. So Jesus is, a, a, is arrested. arrested, a dramatic scene. The guys come, cut off, a, chop off an ear. Uh, the guy tells them, why are you coming at me like I'm a thug? Come know, on, I've you guys. I've been with you guys. Mm. And then uh, they grab him. Then loosely we see a guy <laughs> streaking from the scene. <laughs> that was like a random streaking moment. And it always tickles me. So the theory is that yeah. this is actually Mark, the guy who wrote the book. Yes. Uh, this is actually him that uh, that was there that night. Uh, and so he, the theory is that the that the place they did the upper room meeting was actually his relative's yes. place. I think yeah. his mother's place. Yeah. And so when they when the cops were looking for him, they they proposed that they went to his house first. Their house to so him, he left with his just his mm. she, the linen sheets, garment, linen garment, and the sheets, and he yeah, ran. I know. Then he went and he saw this drama. Then they caught the sheet and the guy took off running. <laughs> and I find it hilarious because I'm like, it's how you put yourself in the story, I know. the director and the yeah. actor. But it always cracks me up. And then Jesus goes through several trials after that. Mm. And so the, this week really is about the trials of Jesus. We spend a long time. So the thing you need to know is that Jesus actually uh, goes through six separate trials, not just one. It's not one long trial. It's six separate trials. Uh, and so he does three religious or Jewish trials, and then yeah. he goes through three Roman or secular trials. Yeah. So first he meets, uh, his name is... Uh, Anna? Yes, Anas. Anas. Yeah, yeah, I say his name so weird. Mm. So he's a high priest and he was, uh, so he meets him, oh sorry, he meets this guy, they go through that trial, then he moves to Caiaphas, Caiaphas. the high priest yeah. who's, who's standing in for his father, then the Sanhedrin, the whole Sanhedrin, yeah. and then after that he's taken to Pilate, mm. now this is not the secular one, the Roman governor, after he meets Pilate, Pilate is like, I don't see the point in punishing mm. this guy, mm. so they move him to go to Herod. Herod, Herod says, uh, I have have no authority to yeah. do this so he ends up back at mm. pilot and this is at 6 a.m yeah, so let me tell you between midnight and 6 a.m this guy goes through six trials six whole trials interesting it's interesting that's why most of the the, the gospels if you notice there's a lot of um i want to say like um what's this a lot of the writings are really about the last week of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of real estate to do with this because these are the hours that Jesus went through, wow. the, the most critical hours of our faith mm. because he was dying for us. Mm. And so that's what happened. So now capital punishment, what you need to know is capital punishment had the right to do capital punishment had been removed from the Jews. So they needed to rely on, uh, go back to the Roman governor and get him to say, you can now kill yes. this guy. Yes. Now, the thing you need to note is that the Jews, this how they handle the trials was against their own culture. Come on. Because how they do it is, according to the Jewish uh, trials, there are several legalities that were in the system about how they were supposed to, you know, deal with somebody. So no trial number one was to be had during feast time. Mm. And this was during the Passover feast. Yeah. So already you can see the Jewish authorities already uh, committing yeah. a crime. They're not following their yeah. own laws. They said each member in the court, you know, the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin and guys, yeah. were supposed to all... Each person was supposed to say uh, who they support or say who they covet or acquit. Yeah. But then during Jesus' time, they did it through acclamation. acclamation. They were like, watch out to Harakisha's story. Yeah. Let's make this go fast. As many of these As many of say, these I. <laughs> say I. True story. <laughs> then if, uh, if a death penalty was given, they actually said a night must pass before a sentence was carried mm. out. But for Jesus, just a few hours passed before he was placed on the cross. Then the Jews had no, uh, of course, they had no authority to execute, so they manipulated the situation. Now, what you need to notice, by the time the trial went to Pilate, mm. this is the most interesting thing, because remember them, they were judging him for blasphemy, yeah. you know, things against the faith. For them, it was that their business had been uh, uh, spoiled, because mm. <coughs> they're the ones who sold cows, mm. they're the ones who sold, I mean, goats, rather, sheep yeah. and pigeons in the temple. Now their business has been messed up, because Jesus says, what you're doing is yeah, fake, you vipers, brood of vipers, spoiled their biashara. 
with their businesses. So now what, when they went to um, pilot, they said they brought different charges. They mm. said, this guy is inciting people. Mm. He's causing them to riot. I know. He's for the, forbidding people to pay taxes. <laughs> He's claiming to be a so king. So they're bringing not <laughs> their personal issues, mm. but they're bringing something that can be tried legally in a yes. court of law. And wow. still Caesar was like, I mean, not Caesar, what's his name? Pilate was yeah. like, this is not according, this is not enough for me to murder him. Exactly. That's why he kept sending him to Herod. Mm. But what he did at the end, he said, because he wanted to please them, because he was in a, a situation where his, the, the, the place that he was overlooking was not doing well. Yeah. So he was in a situation where he didn't want uh, the Sanhedrin or the leaders of the place to make him look bad before yeah. Caesar. And they kept saying, if you don't do this, you're not a friend of Caesar. Yes. So they were blackmailing him. They were blackmailing him. him. So he said, you know what, you guys do what you want. So mm. he, that's why he washed his hands and yeah. said, you guys do what you want. And so we, we, when, when you're reading this week, what I want you to do is take your time to read it and see how our God, being the God of the perfect setup, sets it in, in place so that he gives man authority. You know, when mm. I read it, I also saw the <sighs> importance of human beings. Mm. That because God, because God, God is God, he is, has all authority, but he still chooses to use man and work through man. Yeah. He gave Kinakayafas and all these guys, the authority, authority to go through their process mm. for him to save mankind because mankind is that important mm. to him. And so he lets you know them do their thing, they do their plotting, and he goes through it for that night for for us to be saved. Come on. Now, what you need to note is that now Peter was walking behind mm. through all this. Yeah. He was, following, this, he was behind, following behind. Yeah, closely yeah, behind, After yeah. everybody had abandoned, everyone else had abandoned mm. Jesus, and they were, he was following behind. Yeah. And then that's now when he was in the middle of all this, caught by the by that maid, yeah. the servant. Mm. The servant came and said, "Ah, ain't you?" The guy was like, "Me, I'm not the one. I'm not the one." Yeah. <laughs> and then the cock crows because yeah. it means it was almost morning. Yeah. So it was the final. Um, it was the final time. Hour, yeah. Final hour. And then after that. Um, you know, she says it again, she says it again, and then the guy betrays him. And I love how the scripture puts it. It says he wept. Mm. It says he, from the inside yeah. almost. The, the language yeah. in, in, in the Jewish is that it's, it came from the belly. It wasn't a one tear drop man cry. Wow. Yeah. yeah, like, oh my gosh, I betrayed him. It, it was, was a, belly a full pooping. belly cry. You know, if you watch Korean uh, Korean <laughs> K, K drama like I do, those guys cry. Like my husband is like, why are they always crying hey. half the time? But those people cry. Yeah. And, and I felt like that's what it was. This guy wailed and said, I betrayed my friend. Oh, wow. And what I felt is some of us may have been following Jesus, mm. following from a distance mm. when it's convenient for me, wow. you know, when things are working out. But I want to encourage you to pursue, to lean in and to expect to lean in and to expect more from God. Come on. And say, I'm not going to follow from a distance. I'm going to be all in. Mm. And I, I want to pray for somebody who's been convicted, Come on. said, I've been following from a distance, but now I want to lean in. I want to follow Jesus. I want to be all in for him mm. because he died for all my sins. Come on. What I love about the story of Peter is in the end, he's the one who you know, became the girl of the church. Mm. God redeemed him. He's he said, on this God. rock, I will build my church. And so I feel like God is a redeeming God. He can redeem you, whatever your season has been. However, this year has started out. God is saying, don't follow from a distance anymore. Lean in, trust me, follow me with everything that is within you and, and, and give my all to you. I have your best. Sit with me. Come on. Because Come you know on. what I'm praying for you. Yeah. I got you. Don't follow from afar. Mm. Lean in. So there's a lot of conversion on intimacy mm. with the Almighty right now. Uh, even through times of trial, yeah. that you'd still be intimacy yeah. with the Almighty. Come Amen. On. Maybe yeah. you can pray for somebody out there who needs who needs to lean in and trust God again. Wow. Yeah. wow. If that's you, uh, let's just believe together and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and kindness, your mm. goodness and mercies, Lord. Uh, that as we evaluate our own lives, we are seeing where we are not uh, being intentionally intimate with you or where guilt has kept us from being intimate with you. Or, or where we are followed from afar because you are caught up with other things. And so today, Lord, we just want to reconnect ourselves back to you. We want to ask that your grace that is already sufficient, that you would wipe away uh, the things that have kept us from, you know, being all in and, and allow us to experience your love, your mercies, your warmth, and to be with you uh, in every situation. Uh, in times of prayer, in times of trial, in times of pain, that we would be with you. And so uh, remove from us, you know, the things that have kept us from being all in and allow us then 
the intimacy that, that comes from you. In just time, I do pray and believe and all of us said. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Thank you all, guys. That is week 11 from us with me, Kevin Kilonzi and Pastor Angie. Thank you all. See you in week 12. Hey guys, so this week, uh, beginning uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we have uh, what you're calling the Ndoa Fest. I really hope uh, you guys have registered and I want to invite you in. So what is Ndoa Fest? It's an annual event where we are gathering couples uh, for a time of envisioning, for a time of being, you know, uh, being poured into a time of teaching uh, where you get to grow uh, together with your spouse. So on Thursday, we'll have a pastor's event. If you know any pastor, I want to encourage you to uh, have them sign up, invite them over together their uh, uh you know spouse uh let them be built up uh in this way then on friday we'll have a gala night event man i'm looking forward to that one uh we'll uh the theme is keeping it hot man uh just you know dancing the night away again being taught uh, uh growing together with your partner and then on saturday we'll have a whole day event at hill city uh and again uh, just you know uh, a time where you get to sit you get to hear god's intention over your marriage and so this is the first one that you are doing we'd like to know uh, what you'll think about it so come over give us feedback let us be able to connect uh, in this way. so from us guys at the takeout we want to make a special invitation to you to come over for the door fest see you then